Now we're talking about brakes and sprains to the upper extremities here. Uh, and keep in mind that these are not typically something that's gonna be life-threatening. Of course, you could get you know, further injury from a broken bone, the sharp bone end, severing a vessel. That can compound the problem. It can go through the skin, causing major bleeds and an open wound that you'd have to deal with. But for the most part, this isn't something that is a loss of mobility, but it is something that's important to know how to handle. And for me personally, I call this one kind of the, uh, it's a selfish medical intervention. Uh, because if I can immobilize the hurt limb on here, if him and I are together and need to walk out, if I can immobilize that, then he still has one good arm and he can carry his own gear out and I don't have to carry that for him. So it's kind of selfish in that way, but it is gonna help with the pain. It's gonna make it uh, a lot more stable, immobilize it so that it doesn't cause any further injury uh, to this joint. So really the first one, starting with a shoulder injury, which can be a fairly typical injury, what we want to do is immobilize this joint. And unlike the knee or the elbow, this is not a hinge joint. This is a ball and socket joint. So we have rotational movement with this. Uh, so it's not quite enough to just stabilize it like this. And a lot of times when they have a break or an injury to their arm, they'll kind of self-stabilize in a position of comfort like that. But I want to take the weight off of that shoulder joint by applying what's called a sling. And the sling technique, the sling and swath technique, which is what I'm going to show you now, it immobilizes a shoulder injury, but it's also really beneficial for really any uh, upper extremity type of injury because it stabilizes this, it takes the weight and the pressure off of it. So I think it's a good one to start with. So aside from just the rotating movement, we have to stabilize it up and down, but we also need to stabilize it from being able to move this way. So that's where the swath comes in, All right? So we'll start with the sling, you can relax. I like to use a triangular bandage for that. So if you go to the top of the triangle and kind of grab that tip, you're gonna just tie a simple overhand in there to create a pocket for their elbow. So start at the tip and just kind of wrap that around your finger to create a loop and then bring that little tail back up through that loop. And pull it tight. It's a very simple little overhand knot. And what that does is create a pocket here that his elbow is gonna sit in. So typically they'll be holding it where it's most comfortable. Um, if not, then have them place it there. I'm going to capture that elbow in that pocket and I'm going to come up on the inside with the tails of the triangle. There we go. Now this is on the inside and this is also going to come up, but come up on the opposite side. And here's that pocket that we've created with that knot. I'm going to get this in a position that's comfortable for him. So if it needs to go higher, I simply pull the tails up until this is comfortable. And if that's the position of comfort, then I'm gonna tie that off in the back. You can use a square knot or you can use just a simple bow knot like you would when you're tying your shoes. And so this is taking the pressure. You can re relax that arm, let the weight fall into this sling, it takes the pressure off of here. For a shoulder injury though, if we're trying to immobilize this, this can still move this way. So what we're gonna do is capture this angle right here with another cravat, and this portion is called a swath. And it's best to capture, as this is your angle, your right angle right here, go directly across that kind of at a 45, come around the bottom side, around the back, and I'm gonna pull this around here a little ways, and I'm gonna tie the knot right here. And if the person you're working on is rather swolled, like this guy, then you've got a little less material to work with. If it's a larger patient, a person you're working on, just add another cravat to this. Or use a longer piece of material. And a shemag, if you're using that from your kit, is a lot longer than either one of these cravats. And I've also effectively used duct tape for this portion, wrapping it around to keep this from moving this direction. So we've immobilized and isolated this shoulder injury so that when he's walking out, it's not quite so painful. 
And of course, he's still got one good arm over here that he can hang that rucksack strap on and carry his own gear out. So this is the sling and swath technique for immobilizing a shoulder injury, but it's also really effective for once you've splinted any other type of injury to the upper extremity, it's really good for taking that pressure off and immobilizing the entire limb and making them a lot more comfortable, preventing further injury.